Welcome to this session on DDR Controller Overview, Part 104 by Intuitive Classes. In this session, we will talk about interface signaling of the DDR controller, both on the memory side and the system side. We will also talk about the parameters that designers have to constrain or understand when using DRAM interfaces. Finally, we will talk about how these parameters affect the bandwidth of a DRAM controller. In this slide, we can see marked in blue is your DRAM controller. Then we have a DRAM module which is the actual memory module and we also show clocking. Let's first talk about the module side interface. On the module side we can see two divisions. The first is the control and address group which has the clock, the command, RAS, gas, write, enable, address and chip select. The second is the group that has the DQ and DQS. The DQ and DQS are the ones that carry the data, whereas clock command, address, and chip select carry the command and addressing of the transactions. On the other side, we have the FIFO interface, which has the requests and the busy signal. And then you have the data which may be a wide bus here. It may be 64 to 128 bits wide. Data in and data out with the valid signaling. In this slide, let's talk about DDR terminology. Prefetch. The internal read and write access to the memory is wider than the interface access and this width is typically known as prefetch. So in a 4 and prefetch the memory from in the core operates 4 bits at a time whereas the I.O. may only be transferring 2 bits on a DDR. So the I.O. operates twice as fast and twice in, in the sense on both edges of the clock. The prefetch is a distinction between the various technologies as well, as DDR2 and DDR3 might have different prefetches. Bank. A memory is typically broken into an array of memory chunks. These are quasi-independent and help improve the bandwidth of transactions on the memory. The more banks a memory has, the more efficient transactions can get. Precharge. Closing the banks after transacting with the bank is precharge. Activate. Before a transaction can happen in a DRAM, a row must be opened. Activate is the action of opening a row for transaction. This slide talks about timing parameters on a DDR DRAM. The most important that I'd like to highlight is the TRC, which is the activate to activate delay on the same bank. What it means is if I'm transacting a command, 
let's say a read command on a row in a bank and then I want to access a different row in the same bank I have to incur an activate to activate delay because the DRAM does not allow transacting two different rows on the same bank. TRC sometimes determines how fast a random access to DRAM can be. Faster the TRC, the memory is going to be faster, relatively speaking. TRRD is another command, another timing parameter that is fairly important. It's activate to activate delay on different banks. Typically, a memory has several banks, four or eight. And you can interleave the banks, but you still have to make sure that the activations of different banks have at least the TRRD between them. TRCD is an activate to command delay. Once you have activated a row, you can only issue a command after TRCD time has elapsed. In this slide, we're showing how banks that have been interleaved, TRRD and TRCD comes into play. For the sake of example, we have set TRRD to be 10 nanoseconds or 2 clocks in this case and TRCD to be 13.125 which is approximated by 3 clocks. So you can see that the first action is activate on bank 0. The read on bank 0 can only happen after TRCD has elapsed of 3 clock cycles. So you can, as you can see here, three clock cycles later, the read command is provided. But that would waste all this bandwidth. So in fact, after TRRD is met, we can issue the next command on the next bank, thereby improving the efficiency of the DRAM bus. As you can see in this slide, TRRD and TRCD play a very important role in how much packing can be done on the commands on the DRAM bus. In this slide we're showing how TRC, which we previously talked about, affects the bandwidth of the DRAM bus. Imagine a case where you're transacting on the DRAM bus but you are transacting different rows on the same bank. In this case let's say bank 0. TRC governs how quickly we can activate different rows on the same bank. So if there was only one bank and you're transacting that bank again and again, that limits how fast data can be fetched. In this case, if the burst length is 4 and the memory bus is 8 bits wide, because 11 clock cycles penalty has to be paid every time you activate, assuming a 5 nanosecond clock period, you can calculate the bandwidth that is achievable limited by the TRC and that comes to 580 megabits per second. So designers and people who write controllers, BIOS makers, have to consider the TRC as a very critical parameter when designing the bandwidth of their system. I hope you enjoyed this session on DDR controller overview. Please visit us at intuitiveclasses.info.